If you are new to Dungeons & Dragons, or you just want to hear a quick, easy rundown of ability scores, then this video is for you. Hello, I'm DM Dunn. This video is a beginner's overview of D&D 5th Edition ability scores. Hi guys, it's good to see you back. It's been about a little over four weeks since my last video. I decided to grow a little vacation beard. So in the description below, in the comments, let me know if you like it or if I should get rid of it. But try to be nice if you can. Now, most of what your D&D character can or can't do is based on their six main ability scores. These are strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Starting off with strength. If you are a 35 pound, three foot tall halfling, then you are going to be less likely to use heavy two-handed weapons or carry extra gear for your group or throw a grappling hook and a rope across a large crevasse. Whereas a character with a high strength, they get bonuses when using strength-based weapons and such. So they would be better suited for these tasks. Second is dexterity. Now this is your ability to be quick and agile even good with your hands. Someone with a high dexterity has a better chance of successfully running across a slippery clay tiled rooftop or parkouring down a mountaintop gracefully. Uh, maybe nimbly disarming a trap or picking open a lock. Third is your constitution. This relates to your physical toughness. Go ahead, punch me in the stomach, I can take it. As well as your resilience and health. If you have a high constitution, then you are more likely to fight off the effects of poison. <coughs> Oi, this tastes like poison. <laughs> you probably shouldn't drink it. Or maybe it reduces the amount of physical damage that you would normally take. Smash! <coughs> oh, that didn't hurt. That bad. Next is intelligence. And this is your level of book smarts and trying to recall things from memory. This helps determine how good you are at analyzing. Intelligence refers to how well you've been educated. Fifth is wisdom. As compared to intelligence, wisdom is more street smarts instead of book smarts. With a high wisdom, you are more alert and aware of your surroundings. Your gut feeling is more accurate and you're also more intuitive. Last is charisma. This, this is your swag stat. It shows your level of confidence and with a high charisma, not only are you better at leading others, you also have a better chance of sweet-talking that hottie you spotted in the tavern. <laughs> hey, hey Angel, did it hurt when you fell from the stars? It might work for your character. <laughs> if you look on pages 12 and 13 of the Player's Handbook, you will see more about ability scores. If you want to know how to download a free version, then click in the link in the description below the video. If you prefer to have the actual book like I do, then you can also buy one from the link as well. So, now that you know what these ability scores are, how do you get your numbers to use? Per the player handbook, you can just use 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8, and then put them in whatever order you want. For a lot of players though, the fun is in rolling the dice. No matter if the results are good or bad, it helps create the story, which is fun. You could get an 18, which is fantastic, but you could also get a 3. Instead of looking at a 3 as being a horrible thing, embrace it and let it be part of your character. Maybe they're really strong and have a good constitution, but they have the intelligence of a child, like Blaster from Thunderdome. <laughs> if you choose to roll the dice, you want to get four of the square dice, like the ones that you usually see anywhere else. You can also get some inexpensive dice from the link below. So you take your four <coughs> six-sided dice and you're going to roll them and then drop the lowest one. In this example, it's going to be a 10 for your first number. And do it again five more times. We've got an eight. We've got 14. Fourteen again. Sixteen. And a ten. And there's your six numbers.
If you really want more than 115 and you don't want to gamble with the fate of rolling the dice, there is a third option. It is called point buying. With this, you can get three 15s, but they do come with three eights. If you prefer to be most balanced with the middle of everything, then you could come up with three 13s and three 12s, nice in the middle. How it works is you start with 27 points, and each number that you choose reduces your 27 points. This chart is located on the bottom of page 13. An 8 would cost you 0 points, a 9 would cost you 1, 10, 2, 11, 3, 12, 4, 13, 5, it skips a 7, 14 is a 7, it skips again, 15 is a 9. Notice there is no cost of 6 or 8, it does jump from 5 to 7 and then from 7 to 9. So, now you have your 6 ability scores. Place them in the categories as you want. If you want a physically strong character, then place your highest number in strength, and so on and so on until you place all six. Now that this is done, how does it work in the game? Depending on your score, you will either have a negative or a positive modifier for that ability. 10 and 11 are standard, so the modifier is zero. Below a 10 gets a minus, and above an 11 gets a bonus. This chart can also be found on page 13 of the player handbook. Now let's say you have a 15 in strength. From the chart, that would give you a plus two. Whenever your dungeon master tells you to roll a strength check, then you would roll and you'd be able to add two to the roll. An example might be, you want to drag a fallen tree off of the path that you're traveling on in a forest. The DM says, okay, roll a strength check to see if you're able to successfully move the tree. <laughs> Boom! Not only are you role playing, but you're gonna get a plus two added to your roll. And that's how ability scores work. Like always, please help me out by hitting the like and the subscribe buttons. It's totally free for you, and it really does help me. If you'd like to purchase a copy of the player handbook or anything else, you can access the link through my website in the description below the video. If you use the Amazon link and buy anything from Amazon, then they do throw me a few pennies. So if you're gonna buy something from Amazon anyway, then why not click the link and log in? I need all the help that I can to be able to keep these videos going. You can also help by becoming a Patreon. This is simply a monthly donation that helps me be able to bring videos and content like this to you. You can also access this via the link below. Thank you. And until next time, have more D&D fun with DM Done.